Right. Um, thank you very much. I'm, I'm uh, very excited, I'm very humble to, to stand here. And, you know, a month ago I was packing boxes and, you know, packing up my home in my lap in, in, uh, in, in Cambridge. And it's been a very intense month so far, as you can imagine. But I'm really excited to be here now and, and really introduce myself to you uh, um, and, and sort of give you an idea of what we want to do. So I'm a molecular biologist. And by this, I mean that what we really try to understand is how cells and disease is, is working at a very molecular, structural, detailed uh, level. And for this, you really have to consider um, the fact that uh, what we call the central dogma, that is that there's DNA in all our cells, and this is identical between all our cells, but this DNA, in order to do anything, needs to be transcribed into RNA, which is then eventually translated into proteins. So these proteins are really the absolute key because they are the machines that perform all of the different tasks in, in our cells um, and in our bodies, including all of these processes, but then also including um, all the processes that people here in the, in, in the institute are working on. Although this might all arise, these uh, diseases might all arise from, from changes in DNA, eventually it's the proteins that have gone wrong. So we really have to understand the proteins in great detail. So there's all kinds of different sizes and shapes in proteins, as you, as you will all know. Um, and each of our cells contains about 10, 000, 10, contains 10 thousands of different proteins. So there's already a huge complement of, of processes that we can start with these, processes, with, with these proteins. But really, what you have to also realize is that these proteins are constantly under attack. They're constantly being modified, changing in their, in their, um, uh, in their, in their status by receiving these small chemical modifications. So when we look at one of these modifications, these are very small modifications. So they're about five or six atoms compared to the 20 or hundreds of millions of atoms um, that, that a protein has. So is this important? It, it is very important because what one of these, one of these uh, uh, modifications can do, it can completely change the structure of the protein, the activity of the protein. So this is a very, very important, important process. There's many of these modifications um, and we haven't mapped them all. Um, so, and many people here in the labs work on, on, on these uh, kinds of modifications, and all of them can alter protein functions. But essentially, what we are looking at are switches. These modifications are either there or they are not there. And because they are switches, you know, this, are, this is something that, you know, my two-year-old, he loves switches. He loves switches of all kinds. <laughs> and, and, you know, he would have figured out something like this a year ago, right? So, so now imagine how excited he would be if he would see something like this, <laughs> right? And um, really, this is sort of what uh, I get excited about the same thing at the protein level. So this is a protein called ubiquitin, which is also modifying other proteins. So now we are modifying proteins with other proteins, and because it's a protein, it's, it's much larger in, in, its, in its shape. It's ubiquitous, you know, the name gives it away. Um, but really, it, because it is a protein, it can be ubiquitinated. So we can put additional ubiquitins onto this first ubiquitins to form ubiquitin chains. So question is again, what do these do? And they do something very important, because when you have a ubiquitin chain on your protein, the most common outcome is that this protein will effectively be destroyed. So you can immediately imagine how important this process is. This is a very fundamental process that the cells have, have to get absolutely right in order to really function as a whole. Importantly, this is not just one role for ubiquitin, but we can form different kinds of ubiquitin chains. Um, indeed, we can form eight distinct forms of ubiquitin chains. And this ubiquitin chain does do something completely different. It might bring in other proteins, or it might bring the protein to another place in the cell. So, and this is where we really have a very large toolbox of different kinds of, of uh, modifications to, to play with, and we call this the ubiquitin, co the, the ubiquitin code. So we really need to understand this ubiquitin code, and in order to do this, what we've been doing over the last uh, 10, 15 years is that we are under trying to understand the machineries that, for example, write this code, we understand the proteins that read this code, and we are very interested in the proteins that remove this code again and, and turn the protein back. Um, so I hope you can sort of see why we think that this is a very important uh, switchboard and a really, really powerful tool to change functionality in proteins. 
But another thing that you know, we were, we were very smug about this. We thought, okay, right, this is, this is very nice, and, and this is a very important process. And this was sort of you know, a couple of years ago. And then you know, a couple of months later, after we wrote this big review, we basically realized that you know, this was a very, very small aspect of this. And this work came from some work that we had been doing on a protein that was called, that, that, that was called Parkin, and this is one of these writing proteins, one of these proteins that assemble these ubiquitin chains. So what we realized, that's a very important protein, but the trouble is that um, this protein um, was completely dead. It was completely inactive. It didn't do what it was supposed to do. It wasn't in the right place either. So we already knew that in order to get activated, we needed this modification, these small chemical modifications. But really the surprise and the eye-opener came when we looked where was this chemical modification. It turned out that this chemical modification was not on the protein or here, but it was actually on the ubiquitin molecule. So now we are talking about phosphoubiquitin. Um, so we're having a completely new way to, to change our entire ubiquitin to a different kind of ubiquitin. And indeed what happens then, it just activates Parkin and starts to uh, um, activate this process. So why is this important? Why am I telling you this? Well, both, protein, uh, both Parkin and also phosphoubiquitin, if we do not have this, you are going to come down with Parkinson's disease. And Parkinson's disease, as you know, is a neurodegenerative disease. There's no cure, no early diagnosis for this. And this has really been something that we've been uh, very excited about, uh, very interested in, and, and uh, um, with our insights, hope to, to do something about that. So now we really have to expand this ubiquitin code, and, and uh, we really have to add all these additional chemical modifications to, uh, to ubiquitin. And this is going to be a wonderful playground for really basic discovery, I think. We've already shown this for, for one of these uh, uh, phosphoubiquitins that they are doing something very important. And I'm sure the other ones will be doing the same thing. But another thing that I want to point out is that there is a huge untapped pharmacological potential in the system. First of all, we hope that we can turn this into new diagnostics for Parkinson's disease and related neurodegenerative diseases. Secondly, we are really providing many new drug targets that have been so far inaccessible, have so far been inaccessible. But really what I, would like to, to, what I would like you to imagine is that if we could harness the system, if we could turn it to our benefit, then what we were able to do is to effectively add these ubiquitin chains at will to proteins that we want to remove from the cell. And this is very important for many uh, areas, for example, cancer and so on. This would really be a very important uh, way to, to, a new way to, to treat cancers. So I'm really excited to, you know, take the science here. And uh, this is going to be the perfect place, especially for the last, uh, for this uh, translational uh, aspect, which is the reason why I've come. And I'm really excited to be part of, of uh, Rehi and of Australian science. Thanks a lot. <laughs>